Hey guys, today we're gonna take a deeper dive into the new adjustment clips that just dropped in Final Cut Pro. If you didn't know there was a recent Final Cut Pro update, you may wanna check out this video where I lay out everything that's new. But in this video you're watching now, we're gonna take a deeper dive into one of those specific features called adjustment clips. I'm gonna show you how they can save you time, all the different ways you can use them, why they're different from maybe adjustment layers you may have gotten for free from a third party developer, and maybe even some occasions where you wouldn't wanna use adjustment clips. All right, let's just get into all of it right now. So let's start with a quick rundown of how these adjustment clips work. First and foremost, if you want to drop an adjustment clip into your timeline, the shortcut is option A. And just like when you add a connected basic title, the adjustment clip by default will be 10 seconds long. And you can see my clip underneath still looks exactly the same. The way adjustment clips work is that you can drop effects to the adjustment clip and that effect will only modify the part of the clip that lays underneath the adjustment clip. So you can see the blur I just dropped on affects this section of the clip, but if I head back here in my timeline, there is no blur. And these adjustment clips work just like any other clip. You can trim them, you can split them, and you can add as many effects to an adjustment clip as you would like. Now the adjustment clip is going to affect anything underneath it but not any clip that lays on top. So if I drop another clip onto this first clip, you can see this top clip is not affected, but if I move this adjustment clip up in my timeline by hitting option in the up arrow, now it's affecting my top clip as well. Now the functionality I just demoed for you is the exact same functionality you would have from any other adjustment layer that you've gotten from a third party, but adjustment clips do have some additional functionality. So let me show you one of the new functions to start by clearing out this other media. I'm going to use the range tool to select a portion of this clip. And then I'm going to head on over to the effects browser Again, I'm gonna select that same blur, and this time I'm going to hit option A. And now that adjustment layer has been applied to my clip in the exact duration of that range I selected, and it already has that blur built into it. And now the name of the adjustment clip has been modified to reflect the effect that we applied. Now I can still apply more effects to the adjustment clip, but the name of that adjustment clip will remain that first effect that I applied. So that is one way that adjustment clips are different from adjustment layers, but let's think about some practical scenarios where these adjustment clips are really gonna save you time. The most obvious one would be in a situation like this, where you have a series of shots of the same subject and you want to apply a color correction to these shots. Now, in the past, you may have applied a color correction to one and then copied and pasted all of those color corrections to the rest of your clips. But if you changed your mind and wanted to modify that color correction, that means that you would have to like modify one clip and then remove all the attributes from the rest of the clips and then copy and paste the new color correction to the rest of the clips. It's a lot of steps. So a faster way to go about this would be to add an adjustment clip by hitting option A and I'm going to drag it over the duration of all my clips and apply my color correction to the adjustment clip. And then if I came back later and changed my mind about how I wanted the color correction to look, I could just modify the one adjustment clip and have it impact all of my shots. And so then I could start building the rest of my video project above this adjustment clip and any shots I add above this adjustment clip will not be affected by this color correction. But this is a pretty basic scenario. What if you had something a little bit more complex like this timeline here? This timeline has five different speakers. So adding one adjustment clip with a singular color correction over it for the entire duration of this video probably is not going to work for me. So I wouldn't approach that this way. You could add adjustment clips above all of these different clips of these speakers, but that sort of defeats the purpose of using adjustment clips because if you changed your mind about your color correction, you would have to modify the effects in every single adjustment clip. So that really wouldn't work either. So I'm gonna show you a way to preserve the functionality of adjustment clips in a situation like this. Now I will say you might not wanna use this workflow I'm about to show you in every project. For instance, this particular project is only 30 seconds long and each person only appears once or twice. So this is a situation where I may not do what I'm about to show you, but if you had a longer project and you had people that appear many, many times, you might wanna employ this workflow. So what this is going to entail is lifting each of these speakers as their own connected clips. And by the way, 
I wouldn't do what I'm about to show you until you're very happy with the content in your timeline. This isn't something I would do until toward the very end of your editing process. So I'm gonna leave this first speaker here on the primary storyline, and then I'm going to select everybody else every time they appear by holding down the command key and clicking on the clips. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to lift from storyline. So now I've brought all of these people up as connected clips and I have gap clips on my primary storyline where those clips used to be. The other thing that happened is that some of these clips became connected storylines. I don't want that. I want them all to be individual clips. So I'm going to select all of my connected storylines and I'm going to break apart these connected storylines, the shortcut for which is shift command G. And so now I've broken those apart so they are all individual clips, not connected storylines. All right, let's do our next step, which is now to add that adjustment clip. So I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the beginning of the timeline and hit option A. And I'm going to extend the adjustment clip to be the length of my video. And at this point, I'm going to add my first color correction to this clip. And I'm going to color correct once again for this woman here. Okay, let's say I was satisfied with this. Now what I'm going to do is select that adjustment clip, hold down the option key, and I'm going to click and drag to make a duplicate. And I'm going to select every instance of the next woman we wanna color correct for. She's only in here twice. So I'm gonna select both those clips, hold down the option key and arrow up. So now what's happened is she is being affected by this top adjustment clip and our first woman is being affected by both. So her color correction looks crazy, but we're not gonna worry about that yet. I'm once again going to duplicate the adjustment clip and select our next person. She's in here three times, hold down option and arrow up until she's above our second adjustment clip and beneath our third. And once again, we're gonna duplicate this clip. Our next gentleman, I'm going to shoot him up in the timeline with that same option up shortcut. And then one more time, let's duplicate this adjustment clip and bring the last guy almost to the top. So remember, adjustment clips affect everything beneath it. So our top speaker looks pretty good. I would make some adjustments to this color correction. The next speaker is going to have two adjustment clips on him, so he doesn't look great. If I disable the top one, we've been brought back down to normal. So what I would do at this point is go in and tweak my color corrections on each adjustment clip associated with each individual speaker. Okay, so I've made all of my color corrections, but we still have the problem where all of these adjustments are affecting everybody underneath all of our adjustment clips. Here's what you're going to do now. You're going to select your first set of clips and it's matching adjustment clip and you're going to make it a compound clip by hitting option G. And you're going to do that for every speaker and their corresponding adjustment clip. And so what this has done is it's disabled any adjustment clips in our main timeline. So each adjustment clip is only affecting the appropriate clips because we've nested them in the compound clip. Now, if you wanted to go back and adjust your color corrections, all you have to do is open up the compound clip with the person whose color correction you want to adjust make your adjustments. And I'm just gonna do something really outrageous here for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna go back to my main timeline and now that correction has been applied every time this woman is on camera and it has not affected any other of my clips. Now remember I said you probably don't wanna do this process until you're happy with the placement of all your clips in your timeline because once they're in the compound clips, it's hard to move things around. But if you did find that you had to go back in time and you needed to adjust the placement of your clips, you can do that by just selecting your compound clips and hitting Shift Command G to break apart all of your compound clips now your color corrections are going to look crazy again. That's okay. You can just select those adjustment clips and disable them and then go back to your business of editing, repositioning things, so on and so forth. And when you're ready, you can go back and make them all compound clips again. Now let me show you one of my favorite uses for adjustment clips, which is being able to keyframe moves over multiple clips and have them look really smooth. So in this timeline, I've got this collection of wedding photos here. So what I'm going to do is cue up my playhead to the beginning of the timeline and hit option A to add an adjustment clip. And I'm going to apply that adjustment clip over my first three shots. Then I'm going to cue up my playhead to the beginning of the timeline, select that adjustment clip. And in the inspector, let's keyframe this scale. So I'm gonna start this one at 100. Then I'm going to jump to the end of my adjustment clip and let's increase the scale 
I don't know, to 112 at the end of that adjustment clip. And so I'm adding movement to all of my still frames using a lot fewer keyframes. Now I'm going to duplicate that adjustment clip by holding down the option key and clicking it and dragging. And then I'm just going to modify the next adjustment clip to start at 112% and end at 100%. And now we go from zooming in to zooming out over the next three shots. This is a huge time saver for a situation like this. Here's a similar use case for adjustment clips. I've got this very busy timeline here. And if I wanted to letterbox this entire video to make it look more widescreen, I could do that by adding an adjustment clip and bringing it to the very top of my timeline and then applying a top and bottom crop. And you can see in some situations, I'm not happy with the crop. Like for instance, I'm cutting off this dancer's head. I can just select that specific clip in my timeline and reposition the Y value. And so I'm maintaining that crop and fine tuning any shots where the framing is really sticking out to me like so. I love this use. And here's another great use for adjustment clips. It allows me to apply an effect over parts of two separate clips without having to actually split the clips. So what I'm going to do is again, use the range tool to select a portion of my video. This is spread over two separate clips. Then I'm going to select an effect in my effects browser and hit option A. And now I've applied the colorize effect over just these two portions of the clip. And then I can modify the effect. And so just this section of my timeline is affected by this colorize effect. And I didn't have to split these clips into two pieces and then copy and paste the effects. Now real quick, I'm just going to duplicate that effect and modify the color. And then if I want to reuse that effect over and over, they both say colorize, which can be confusing. I'm going to head on over to the index, navigate to clips, find this colorize effect in my index by selecting the clip in my timeline. It gets highlighted here and I can label this pink. And now it's called pink in my timeline. If I head over to the next colorize effect, and select it, it reveals itself in my index and I'm going to call this one teal. And now easily in my timeline, I can just glance at these adjustment clips and know which ones are making my footage pink and which ones are making my footage teal. And then if I wanted to repeat that effect in other parts of my video, I could easily just duplicate those adjustment clips. And I do want to show you one other cool thing about adjustment clips and how they work. When we go to export our project by hitting the share button, let's go to export file and head on over to roles. Then I'm going to switch my roles as from QuickTime movie to multi-track QuickTime movie. And I can remove those adjustment clips from my export. So I'm going to X out of those adjustment clips and hit next. And so what this has delivered to us is a version of our edited video without any effects that were laid into adjustment clips on it. Even though in this particular case, we had buried those adjustment clips into compound clips, it still recognized them on import and disabled them. This might be helpful for some of you when you're archiving. Let's say you stacked a whole bunch of crazy effects onto a video, but you want to keep a clean version of your video for future reference. This might be a great workflow for you. I'm really curious if you haven't been using adjustment layers in the past, do you like these workflows? Do you think they're going to help you save time? time in the future. Let me know down in the comments, you guys. Thanks for hanging out. In the meantime, I picked out some other videos I think you're really going to love. I'll see you again.